Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Duggan, and I am here with Justin Davis, and we're checking out Pillars of Eternity. We are a uh, new sort of old school, relatively hardcore RPG from Obsidian, um, spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate and the other Infinity Engine games. Um, I did hit new game, right? I was only half. You did, attention. yes. Okay. When you did normal. Um, there's a couple different modes you can select from, like a uh, kind of a an Iron Man character yeah. dies, you can't resurrect them kind of thing. Yeah, easy, normal, hard. Uh, the only thing that's really, I mean, there's lots of things notable about them, but the most especially notable thing about that is that uh, they don't just scale enemy stats, which is kind of the lazy way of doing it, but it's like easy might have like one wolf, and normal might have two wolves, whereas hard might have like a wolf and a dire wolf. So they actually change. Oh, wow, like, so it's like situationally different. Yeah, they change the enemy compositions, um, and uh, we're really trying to show off character creation today, mm -hmm. so I never in a million years would I skip this story. Right, it's, it's <laughs> fantastically written. Uh, the voice acting is great, and frankly, even though all I mean all of the the art style is very interesting because there are three D models, but the entire thing is overlaid on this kind of like two mm -hmm. D isometric drawing, I suppose. Yeah, again, if you're familiar with Baldur's Gate, these other games, very much a throwback to that gorgeous sort of high res, beautiful pre rendered backgrounds. Um, you know, and they managed to the to uh, the pre renderedness doesn't make them feel super static because they still have little tricks like real time lighting and stuff like that baked in. Um, but really, we're here to show off the character creator for sure. And uh, and goodness gracious, James, could you spend some time? <laughs> I in did. This character I creator? did spend some time in this character creator. Um, the backstory of each and every uh, option up there, yeah. like race, class, attributes, culture, appearance, voice, mm -hmm. not so much voice, but everything else <laughs> it is super in-depth. One, uh, one of the things that I like most about this actually is uh, they give you these little mouse overs. I was just about to point to that. Okay. They're so fantastic. And even when it's not necessarily the context. Man Sorry. The what? Man or woman. Oh, uh, your choice. Let's be a lady. All right. Okay, so even if you don't know... Oh. Sorry, you were oh yeah, so say. so um, even if the context of what it is saying, so for instance, let's say they just use might in a a sentence like um, the great warrior had a fantastic amount of might, it'll yeah. still highlight might, and you can see what what might means in the game world and uh, what it and it, it this is a very so old school kind of D and D, so it has a lot of. Um, mechanics going on in the background and, and it's a really nice way to kind of bring characters into not just the the world in a narrative sense but also in a kind of mechanic sense yep i absolutely agree um sort of the races are they you know they get some stat bonuses um but really they're not so strong that you can't be like if you want to be you know an aggressive elf you can be although that you know for min maxers that would drive them crazy it's not completely opt optimal uh, the races are a combination of like fantasy archetypes, like elves, dwarves, um, but then you do have some that are very unique and very special to Pillars of Eternity. You know, you have the godlike. Um, you have the go ahead and pronounce that. Ao Maua. Ao Maua. I was sitting there for maybe five minutes, just racking my brain trying to figure out how to pronounce that, and I'm still not sure we're doing it correctly. But they're yeah, so they're humanoid esque, but uh, you know, kind of river, river folk, ocean folk. Right. Um, uh, let's be one of the godlike, just because they're the most special. And I think if I actually remember right, you actually get to choose. Yeah, there's which like death, type. fire, uh, right. life. There's a whole bunch of ones, and, and they're very interesting. So, uh, and that's actually this is going to extend to the classes when we get there in a second. But Pillars of Eternity really is a combination of traditional fantasy archetypes, and then you know special things that really do feel genuinely new and and fresh. Um, these are not just changing. You know, if you pick a moon godlike, fire, death, it's changing more than just their like lore. Or, you know, where they fit into this game world, they actually do change their... They have passives. Yeah, yeah they get different passives. So um, That being said, the lore for these these guys in particular is fantastic. Like, the moon godlike or the nature godlike, when one is born into a culture, they're kind of revered. They feel like it's lucky. But most death godlike are killed at birth because it's an omen of bad times, basically, which is really cool. And so. we uh, the game's dialogue, and I don't know how much of that we're going to get to show off here, but you should know if you are creating your character that uh, all these choices, man, woman, race, class, even your culture, your background, uh, they'll have custom dialogue options and conversations with people. They'll react to you differently if you're a noble or if you were a slave or, or, or what have you. I actually didn't know that. That's amazing. <laughs> and I, I can only imagine the amount of uh, uh, like that the resource load for that is just an exponential effect for every single uh, variable you can choose. Yeah, I mean, it's not across the board. It's not like all eight classes will have eight unique dialogues mm -hmm. in a conversation. It'll be like, if you happen to be a fighter in this situation, like you might have something special or unique you can do. Um, so, 
again, the character classes are a combination of, you know, everyone sort of has an understanding of what a rogue does. So, although even here it's a little bit different, you know, ranger, paladin, fighter. But there's totally super unique and special ones like Cypher. We're seeing a lot of godlike ciphers if people are trying to do something new and special. Mm-hmm. Seeing a lot of those around the internet today. Which uh, which class did you choose on your on your first character? Uh, so I rolled the character, and I'm about eight hours into the game. Um, and I originally rolled um, a druid, who I do enjoy my druid, but I'm th- actually thinking about starting over. Mm-hmm. Um, just because the druid is a little bit more. I mean, I guess I don't know why I'm surprised, but it's a little bit more melee focused than I was expecting. Really, that's interesting. So um, I'm thinking about actually re-rolling. Um, as a rogue. So the rogues in this game are, uh, they're a little bit less defined by, although, the, you know, they are, are still stealthy, obviously. A rogue in any video game is going to be stealthy. But they're kind of more like, almost like dirty fighters. Yeah, they're I like very guess. CC orientated. Um, yeah. Yeah, like the vicious and brutality. Totally, like right. These are, ru- ru- you know, ru- words to describe <laughs> the rogues in this game. Kind of like um, a, a scoundrel or just, uh, they get a bonus. I think their passive is like, when somebody is um, either has a movement speed or, or has been like hobbled or hamstrung in some way, they get a bonus to attacking them, and all of their attacks do that, so it's a very good synergy. The one class I did want to point out that just completely blew my mind was actually the Chanter. Yeah, the Chanter. Uh, really which crazy. is so cool, and basically the idea is that they're reciting kind of these um, ancient hymns almost, and each, if you actually hit next, each... Uh, the, the moves you choose are sentences. And so you have to say a couple of these sentences and build up kind of um, your argument, so to speak, and then you were able to cash it in with some super sweet effect. like. Uh, and so you choose, I'm choosing two of these. And so it's like, you're almost like building a song right. on the fly. Their, their closest analog is probably a bard in other games because mm-hmm. they're kind of a buffing, debuffing class, but that's not really they're wholly unique like i've never seen or played anything exactly like a chanter they're also confusing i mean look if you're getting pillars of eternity feel free to roll whatever class you want but in my opinion i wouldn't consider a chanter like an especially beginner friendly class. yeah yeah i ended up actually going with a paladin who just lights his sword on fire and and (laughs) hits people in the face totally fine i'm cool with that yeah um uh, ciphers are also kind of unique um i don't know I, actually even though i think i might not roll a druid in uh my final pillars of eternity game i think for the purpose of this let's play sure just because a druid i want to show off something y- specific sure go for it a, a druid gets to change what form they shape shift into and here's uh, james actually tell me if this is stupid or not i pick cat because I thought I would shape shift into you know like a puma or something. Yeah, but it's like almost a, like a big cat, right? But he's not. He's on uh, he's on two legs, and it's almost like werewolf. Oh, that's super weird. So and it's I kind was of like, like a, a man cat. Yeah, the first time I transformed, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know. We. I wonder if it's the same with like boar and bear. If you turn into a man bear pig, if you choose boar. Or... I've seen. I mean, bear is a proper bit a proper bear. Oh, that's I very interesting. Seen boar. There I've must. Seen... I mean, there must be lore to support it. it seems like there's. Uh, and I like that shape shift because it's not tied to mana or MP or there is no MP, but it, basically you can do it once per fight. Right. Once per battle. So at the start of each battle, you can just turn into your bear form or boar form. And that's a very common uh, thread across basically all classes, even stuff like the wizard who reads from a book and only has a certain amount of charges every time they rest. Eventually, if they learn the spell well enough, they can use one per fight, basically. Mm, interesting. And they actually do have, uh, you know, they have skills that do reset on Rust as well. Look at how many spells you have to choose from. So it's like, not only can you, you know, it's like, oh, I want to be a wizard, but someone else can be a wizard and have none of the spells that right. you have. They can have a totally different Grimmery, and you can, you yourself can have multiple ones, like one for healing, one for kind of combat, one for uh, encounters, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Like, So a lot of the spells are unique, um, but some of them are also, you know, it's like they don't call it, you know, magic missiles or arcane missiles, but, you know, Minaletas, minor missiles. It's just a little bit more flavor. You know, like even if you've never played this game, you have some understanding if you've ever played D&D or another role-playing game, you know, or Slickin is sort of like an oil slick. So it's this combination of just like everything else in the game of like sort of things that you understand and recognize and things that are new. And I love how well they spell out the effect. So down there, it's just, it's a mathematical formula um, which a lot of games kind of shy away from because it's like, oh, we don't really want to throw math in their face. But it's it's for for min maxers or anybody who's kind of a an RPG guy. Like this is fantastic because you know exactly what it's doing. Well, and you have the choice of like how deep you want to get into it. 
Like, if you are obsessed with, okay, what's their chance to save versus the spell or stuff like that, like, you can get into that, or you don't need to get into any of that if you don't want to. Um, I don't know. Should we just move forward with this wizard? Sure, totally. Right on. So, uh, one of the more controversial things about Pillars of Eternity, and look, this game's getting fantastic reviews across the board from IGN and from virtually everywhere else, but people are kind of mixed on the stat system. Um because they abstracted things to such a point where, you know, might isn't just physical strength. I mean, it says so right here. It represents a character's physical and spiritual strength, brute force, as well as their ability to powerful cha power, channel powerful magic. So it's like the reason they did this is because they didn't want anyone that was, you know, new to RPGs or just playing around to ever be screwed. Mm -hmm. So every single stat is useful to every single class. That's that's the upside. Uh -huh. But the downside is that it's abstracted things to such a point where, like, okay, so what does a really high might wizard look like? Are they muscly or like how how do you wrap your head? Right. Is this? is it is it their mental fortitude that's mighty or? Yeah, and it, it is certainly a separation from kind of conventional. Okay, I'm a I'm a warrior. I'm gonna pour everything into might. I'm yeah. a I'm a wizard. I need intellect as my primary thing. So and so, this is also important because uh, they affect things. So intellect specifically, actually, intellect is a great example because what int intellect does, among other things, is you can see as I put points into intellect, it ups the size of area effect. So if you have an attack that you know, hits people in a cone or hits people in a circle. Dumping more points into intellect makes that circle bigger so you can hit more enemies. You know, effects will last longer, you're seeing, as I'm dumping points into intellect right now. It up that duration, you know, 45% down to, you know, 10% if right. I don't have any intellect. But the interesting thing or the thing that's confusing or controversial about this is, like, that's really useful to, like, barbarians, too. If you're a barbarian that's trying to, you know, uh, bleed somebody or do an effect that lasts a certain duration, you might, like, there's a super valid, plausible reason why you might want to be a high-end totally. barbarian to make those effects if last If you're a longer. little barbarian kid, stay in school because yeah. it'll pay off. Super true. So, I, you know, again, I kind of am of two minds. I think that ultimately this was a smart stat system. You know, don't let someone make their game, make their character, and then 12 hours into it they're just hosed. They're like, right. oops, I picked all their wrong stats and I really screwed up and now i got to start over. So I think they did the right thing. But, you know, I also understand the per the, the the perception from people. That Do you know if there's an ability by. to kind of respec in this game? And, and have I haven't. I haven't certainly gotten far enough. Uh, I spent maybe two or three <laughs> three hours like reading through all of the character creation, yeah. and then got to the end of the tutorial, and then I was like, "Well, bedtime." Yeah. As far as I know, you can't respec. Um, what you can do is make party members from scratch at the inn. So let's say you made we made this moon god like wizard, and then we're like, "Well, we didn't do her right at all, but I don't want to start the game over." You could just make five companions, five party members, and you know meticulously pick oh, all okay, their stats. Right. So you can hire adventurers from the inn, and when you hire them from the inn, they're like a generic adventurers, and you can customize like they could shore up your weaknesses, maybe. Totally, and um, you know this obviously this game has uh, replay potential in different modes. So maybe you kind of learn what stat allocation might be best for the build you're going for, yeah, and you're able to kind of have a better mind for that when you re-roll. Yeah. So. so we're actually getting into, and I just picked, and again, I'm not paying a huge amount of attention. Like, I just kind of pick some spells. Sure, like, sure. We're not, this is, we're really just demonstrating this character builder for you. And so. what's great is, as you're uh, showing right there, all of the spells that you choose or passives you have from picking, like, a clan, if you're a paladin or, or a, you know, something like that, it all just displays under the class so you can see exactly what you're getting into, which is nice. Yeah. So we picked female, we picked our race and our, uh, and our class. And now where the game sort of goes above and beyond or begins to go above and beyond is you get to pick your culture. And not only does that give you sort of another minor stat boost where oh, I wanted to put one more point into decks, but I couldn't quite, you know, find the place to get that point. It also changes your look and style, you know, your starting, starting weapon, equipment, your starting yeah, armor. Which is appropriate to like like that for instance which i cannot pronounce but they're kind <laughs> of like it's a right. uh, kind of a colony of of pirates almost uh yeah and, and mercenaries and that's you know the chain mail is kind of indicative of that it's so. really interesting right um so if you're like a systems guy you don't care about role playing um you know what you would probably pick is whatever gives you the stat boost that you want right but it also is sort of really awesome and valuable from a role-playing perspective. Like, look, I, I think it sounds more fun if my character is from the woods or if my character is from the plains or, you know, if they're from the country that's on top and dominant or if they're from the underdogs, you know. So so whichever type of player you are, there's kind of something for you. Um, and then I actually really liked this, too. 
getting to pick their background. Mm -hmm. And so, James, this is super nerdy of me, but one of the things I'm struggling with is I want my character to be an aristocrat. Just Uh I don't know. It seems fun. I want them to be like a noble, (laughs) but I want them to be a rogue. And I'm like trying to reconcile in my head. Oh, well, I mean, they were an aristocrat and then they became um, disenchanted with the lifestyle and Mm -hmm. and their fellow nobles. So they decided to live the life of a rogue. And they're, they're a renegade who's kind of spit in the face of a an enlightened life interesting so super rp there but hey yeah yeah that's and what we're that is exactly what we're getting into with pillars of eternity if you're playing it like me i guess and so once again if you're just a systems guy you know pick the background that boosts you know sort of the passive stats that you want you know uh athletics lore and now we're actually these are separate than your attribute stats these are you know i, I almost don't even know what to call them skills i guess like your yeah skill points. so it's so like for instance might um, can give you... Well, that's different. Again, these are your stats. Like yeah, might. yeah. So, so, for instance, might gives you endurance, which is then one of those, like, smaller skill things. So I believe endurance is, like... It's interesting. So so lore would be counted under intellect, I believe. So if you put a point into intellect, you get a bonus into lore. I believe uh, that's how it works. I don't think so. Okay. I think these, <laughs> I think these skills are, like, passive Completely skills. Completely independent of that system? Yeah, and so I'm trying to find one. Here's one that has mechanics. And, like, mechanics is how... Uh, that's, like, this game's version of, like, thievery. So, like, unlocking, you know, locked doors and things like that requires the mechanic skill. And anybody can take it. And so they've sort of divorced that, okay, I need to have a rogue to unlock doors or get into locked chests. Instead, you could just dump all your points of mechanics into, you know, a wizard, and they could be your guy in your party that does that. Um, And lore is often used in conversation. So it's like if you have a high lore, you know, the RP sort of answer is that you know more about the world. As well as using scrolls, I believe, right? That's true. So there is actually a combat use in there for sure. So let's, let's make her an aristocrat. Um... I don't know. Do you care what she looks like? Aesthetics. Not really. No? I think she's I l- pretty awesome. As she's, actually, is. she's actually very pretty. Well, she is a moon goddess, so. Yeah, we did a good job. Um, it's actually kind of interesting that we picked this godlike because, uh, not that it super matters, but we're not going to have as much of an opportunity to sort of show off, you know, the head and hair and body Yeah, options. or any helmets because they cannot wear helmets. That's true. They can't wear Their heads helmets. are all godlike. They, they just don't fit. <laughs> Um, and actually, this is uh, this is another r- reasonable point. There's not a huge number of portraits. Yeah, so that. I was a little bit, not miffed, but I question why they did this because there's so many uh, customization options with um, kind of not just the culture of your character, but the demeanor. Mm-hmm. And you kind of, as you're building up, you kind of have a picture in your head of what this character looks like. And they're like, well, here's 66, which, sound, which sounds like a lot, but as scrolling through. But it's 66 see, like, for men and women right. and for all and the for races all the and races, all the races. Uh, all the different, so it's we, so if you rolled like a one if you rolled like a like dwarf ours. godlike or whatever, like you're kind of hosed. Like yeah, there, totally. there just aren't portraits that fit every single race and class. It'd be cool if you could upload your own. I think you can. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, it's not like built into. There's not like an upload button here, but I think there's like a folder you can dump them into in oh, your computer awesome. as long as you know like what the dimensions are. Oops. I went. Can I go back? I want to go back. I didn't mean to pick that portrait. Here we go. Um. But, like, the, you do have some flexibility. Like, I rolled an elf the first time, and, like, technically, these are the only elf portraits. I didn't like any of them. Mm-hmm. So I went back and picked this chick. Who, like, Can't this see is, her ears, so who knows? Like, this is technically a human right. portrait, but it's like, that she passes as an elf. Sure, sure. And so, like, that's... that's. But if you are a godlike, then then you have even fewer options. Like, you're kind of stuck with this. Yeah, that's... Even that's though the, that's not the even... The death a, godlike. Yeah, is there even, even a, a moon? I guess that's kind of a moon? Yes. I've oh, there we go. There's the voice. I like that there's different voices. For sure. They're not uh, race-specific, though. No. But, you know, I do think, like, even though my character isn't uh, a mystic, isn't a caster, like, I listen to all these. You can click on these and hear right, different totally. voice samples. And I think I ended up picking the mystic just because I liked... The way it know, sounded. Yeah, the per- her personality. I've got this. That's fair enough. Uh, what else do we need to talk about? I think that pretty much did wraps it, it up. Uh, yeah, I believe we did. That's... I that's let's, go through, let's, the... go, let's go through the whole thing again. Let's just start over. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a huge amount of flexibility in this bill, in this uh, class. It, it, it's kind of overwhelming. Well, it's one of those things where, like, if you want to spend two hours in here, you know, reading every single element of the lore, 
you know, which type of elf do you want to be? You know, you can do which that. have different passives as well. Yeah, um, exactly. So it's like that's an option that's available to you. Or if you're just like, yo, I know I want to be a melee guy. I know I want to bash things over the head. You know, you I didn't just necessarily want to sit there for two hours and scroll through all this stuff, but I did just because it was so engaging. And I was yeah. like, wow, look at yeah. this. Like the lore starts yeah. like that combination of Pillars of Eternity is all about this combination of, you know, lore and gameplay and how they intermesh with each other, you know, role playing and gameplay. And uh, that bleeds all the way through even to the stat screen. You know, it's like perception means something in this world. It's not just a stat to, like, dump some points into. Totally. Super digging the game. Um, by the time you see this, the IGM review will probably be up. But, you know, it's not a secret that the game's great. Um, you should definitely go out and buy it. Yeah, check it out, especially if this is your thing and you're you're kind of a old Baldur's Gate guy. Yep. Or, or just a big D&D &D guy. Yep. Um, it certainly caters to that audience. And it's extremely deep, but extremely engaging. And even if you don't want to get super deep into... Okay. All the mechanics, you can kind of just breeze through some of the stuff and pick a rough idea of what you want and go for it. Woot! That's a good note to end on. All right, well, I'm James Duggan. I am Justin Davis. Thank you for checking out Pillars of Eternity. For all things Pillars of Eternity, including our review, which hopefully is out at this point, keep it right here at IGN.